Hello everyone, hope you are doing well and keeping safe. Today is World Cancer Day and the hashtag for the day is Close the Care Gap. Today on Fertility Voices, we have an oncologist, Dr. Premier Poche from Texas Cancer Center. Cancer is on the rise and so is infertility cases. Could there be a relationship between the two? I'm not an oncologist, so I went out there and I sought an answer from an oncologist. So my name is Dr. Prima Sucheng. I'm a clinical oncologist. I work at uh, Texas Cancer Center as an oncologist. I also consult at Kenyatta National Hospital and I'm also a lecturer at the University of Nairobi where I'm the program coordinator for training of doctors at master's level in clinical oncology. Cancer and fertility is a very big and very broad subject. And it's a subject which uh, has been rather ignored in the management of cancer in uh, sub-Saharan countries and well developed in the developed countries where the fertility clinics work very, very closely to cancer treatment centers. And this is because a number of treatment of cancer really affect the fertility. But more importantly is the treatment of cancer involving radiation in the children or the so-called pediatric oncology, where we do a lot of radiation which involve radiating around the pelvic area, that is the waist area and below, and uh, these are people who actually, if we affect their fertility and it means that in adulthood they will not be able to actually function, their fertility system won't function at all. I'll give an example that the commonest cancer that we treat at uh, most of our private and public hospitals in this country with the radiation children involved radiating what we call craniospinal. Craniospinal treatment is where we radiate the whole brain and also we treat the whole spine all the way to the seat, all the way to the coccyx, as you may call it. Now, down there, what we have the most important structure is called the ovaries. And the ovaries are very tiny structure. They are very radiation sensitive. And when we radiate these children, more often than not, we are not able to spare this small structure called the ovary. If we radiate the ovary, you get permanent infertility. We destroy the ovaries completely. And that means these children will not be able to have children at all because they don't have the ovaries if they're girls. If they're male, you would have radiated their testicles. That is where the sperms come from and sperms is what you need to combine with the, ov uh, with the egg over to be able to get a baby. So we, cre we then cause them to have again permanent sterility. And this is something we have not developed quite well because sometimes even the mothers, we don't emphasize to them this, or the parents. And so the children go through the treatment, and since this is not emphasized, they expect when children reach adulthood to have babies. Something which I didn't mention also in the cancers of the children is that children cancers, almost all of them get chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy we give them is for 12 months. And that amount of chemotherapy can actually make them infertile completely. Radiotherapy, on the other hand, whether given to young or old, causes in permanent infertility. And therefore, when radiation is delivered to the area around the pelvis, and that's where the ovary sits, and the testicle sits, care must be taken and patient must be provided with full information of the consequences that may come afterwards terms of infertility. You know, currently we're having our cancers coming down, we're seeing so many young people with cancers, the 20s and the 30s, and most of their treatment, their cancers may involve abdomen, their cancers may involve the pelvic area, or they may have cancers moving to the bones in the pelvic area, and so that requires treatment with radiation. Most of them may actually be radiated and get permanent infertility. Is there a way we can prevent this or can treat this? Well, 
for young men who are getting, and of course, young men who are above the puberty, we can actually be able to preserve their sperms, and we call it sperm banking, which is readily available in the country. We have many fertility clinics. So if a young man is to get radiation or this little chemotherapy for very long, they could be offered sperm banking, which simply means the young man gets a sperm, and then the sperm is then frozen and kept, and then when they get married, they can still enjoy their sexual relationship with their partners. But when they need the babies, then they do in vitro fertilization. What about the boys and boys and girls who are below, the, you know, boys who are below puberty, you know? less than 15 years or so. Yes, so this is not commonly done, but still there's an opportunity for it. And actually it can be in specialized clinic even here. They can actually aspirate the sperms and then again do the same process of freezing the sperm and keeping it. And when this people get married, at later stage in life, this sperm can be used for in vitro fertilization. So this is an area which we need to exploit because, as you know, cancer is becoming part of our life. It's becoming the COVID of the day. Almost everybody's at risk. Everybody can get it, and anybody can get it at an early age. So we're trying to work it out so that we can be able to have these oncology clinics work very, very closely to fertility clinics so that we can be able to offer or provide these services timely when we need them. Surprisingly, cancer has now become a disease of everybody. Even the masses who lead a very, very non-affluent, so to speak, we see them with cancer as well. So my message to everybody is that get checked, number one, and if you have any sickness which you do not get, is not going away despite treatment, be checked for cancer. So be screened, go for early detection, and get treated unless live on with this disease. We know some cancers don't have screening, but these are the cases where if you feel the doctor take care of you and things are not getting well, seek advice from the right specialist and the oncologist to assist. Uh, Texas Cancer Center where we are today, this is the only private cancer facility offering comprehensive services in the Eastern Central Africa. We provide chemotherapy services, radiation services. We also provide radioisotope therapy, that is the iodine therapy services. We provide palliative care. We do cancer screening. We give targeted therapy as well. And we also do a lot of outreach programs related to cancer. Thank you for watching Dr. Premius Ocheng, our oncologist for today. Now we have the answer. Does it mean that oncologists need to work with fertility specialists? I think so, because we need to tell the patients the truth. We need to tell them that they, they, will, be, uh, they will not be productive if the radiation is passed to them. So what does it mean? It means that we need to tell them that they reserve their eggs, maybe by doing IVF procedure. We need to tell the men to reserve their sperm before they do the radiation. I think it's very, very important that people who are struggling with uh, uh, cancer and they need to go through the cancer treatment, they should be encouraged to preserve their fertility or to preserve their egg or sperm.